Hey Vim, I am no wine connoisseur, but today I'm about to meet one. So if you live in Metro Manila, chances are you've seen a Barcino bar before. They are everywhere. In only 14 years, they managed to pull 16 branches, and as of two months ago, they just made a 17th branch here in Eastwood. Fun fact, I used to live like three blocks that way in Eastwood. I was an Eastwood boy. I think it was four or five years ago. So this vlog is actually going to be two parts. The first one is going to be a wine one one crash course with Barcino. Second part is going to be more of learning how to pair your meal with the right type of wine. Tony and Sergio is going to help us out with that. They're another, uh, more of a restaurant, Spanish restaurant, that also happens to serve different forms of wine. So it's a kind of, wine is the theme of the day. All right, so I'm going to let you guys into a small secret. Small secret, huh? Normally when I go to a bar, I, I drink red wine, but I don't actually know like the first ABCs of wine drinking. I just like look at a menu, you know, pose all cutesy, kind of act like I know what I'm doing, and I say, what's your best seller for red wine? And then the guy says A, B, or C. And I say, ah, okay, I'll have one glass of that. Thank you very much. And that's about it. The secret's out. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So I'm meeting someone who's legitimately going to teach me the ins and outs. And um, I'm in luck because I'm with no less of an Oscar Bosch and expert. So let's see if we can level it up today. And I'm inviting you to level it up with me. Because you don't want to be the guy who stares at the menu and doesn't know what he's doing. You want to be the guy that has his sh together. I think just about everybody likes the idea of wine. Doctors say a glass of wine a day can extend your life. It's like a staple of pop culture. Cheers. I think there's something to actually knowing the ins and outs. That's the heart of the appeal. So can you also talk to me a little bit about like how is wine made? Okay, it's very really easy. Wine is a juice, great juice. Fermented. Mm. You harvest the grapes, just bring it to the factory. Is it a special kind of grape? Or? No, any kind of grapes. Ah, okay. okay. Harvest, mm. bring it to the factory, they brush it, they pour it in the tanks, they add yeast to make the sugar to the alcohol, make it there for maybe one, two months, then later. Fermentation. Fermentation, exactly. Then later, after that, they filter, they put it in another tank, filter again, bottle for aging in a bottle. Okay, so wine for beginners. Which wine makes the most sense for a beginner? Okay, well, here in Masino we have all kinds of wines for every age. But for beginners, I would recommend you to start with a fruity, easy to drink, not the full body wine, a white, a young wine, red. Because if you start, if you start with a high full body wine like red, if you are starting as a beginner, you will feel it so strong. This is starting with the young, easy drinking, medium body, mm. full body. Then you work your way up slowly. Exactly. And in general, is there wine for an age group? Well, like you told me there was for beginners, but is there wine yes. for like a particular age group? It depends. It depends on your taste also. What kind of wine you like? More sweet, more dry. You know, more into reds or into whites or into roses. So, when is the best time to drink wine? The best time, anytime. For lunch, for breakfast, for mm. dinner, after dinner, with friends, with family, alone. Uh, anytime is good for the wine. What time do you guys open and close? Uh, we open at 11. Mm. And we are closing around 2. Wow. That's the best time to drink wine. Yeah. So. <laughs> While the camera was off, he just confessed to me that he was drinking wine since he was eight years old. I don't even know what I was doing at eight years old, but it definitely was I was like playing with Legos probably. <laughs> but you know, hey, at least he got a head start. So, okay, we're gonna start off with some wine tasting. These are our new wines from mm. Argentina. These are Cabernet Sauvignon. I will show you how you can appreciate or what you need to do to appreciate mm. the wine. Normally you pour the wine. Then the first thing that you need to check is the color and if it's clear or not. Mm. You see also when you move it for the oxygenation, the oxygen get inside the wine. See, I've heard that but I don't know what it means. Okay, like, wine, I, I always knew you have to shake it but I don't get why. I will, I will explain to you. Uh, the wine, when it's bottled, inside the bottle, mm. the wine is sleeping. It's sleeping. Sleeping. Okay? Yes. 
then you need to make him walk up. Okay. When you open the, the bottle, you open the cork and you put it in the glass, mm. you need to get the oxygen to walk up and to give you all the taste and the smell mm. of the grape. So it changes the actual flavor? Exactly. Mm. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> then you move it, you can see the glycerin. You see the tears? Tears. Going down. Ah, yes, yes. That means that it's a full body wine with a lot of glycerin. So there's actually a way to tell, is what he's saying. If you can see the dripping going down, several of those drops going down, that means that it's actually a true traditional... A full body wine. Full body. Next, smell. You need to smell. Then you smell different kind of things as you want to see. You can feel the leather, maybe. Yeah, I got a lot of work to do on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, we'll get there. Okay. Hannibal Lecter, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Is there a correct way to hold it? Yes. You know what I'm Yes. The oh, most comfortable okay. for you. Fun fact. I was asking what is their most expensive wine bottle here, and it's apparently the... Chalatlan! Mata Romera 2011, right here in my hands. Magano about it? How much? More than 12,000. More than 12,000. I better put this down. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the test. I have been talking now to Oscar Bosch for a solid 15 minutes, and I have just been taking in all the facts I can stick into this brain in 15. So I'm gonna test myself and really quickly run through you guys the five different categories of wine by Oscar Bosch. White wines, rosé wines, sparkling wines, red wines, Kava and dessert wines. Correct me as I go, huh? But apparently what distinguishes some of these wines is the way in which they're made. So, new beginner here, huh? But after 15 minutes, I'm gonna give you what I know. I guess beginning with how what distinguishes them from each other, it has to do largely with production. Mm -hmm. So, white wine is relatively quick to make, one to two hours, brief. In between, you have rosé, which takes about 24 hours to make. Wow, who knows this <laughs> To get the color. And the longer that you take, it apparently makes it more red. Because exactly. the red wine has to take a full 30 days to make. And that allows it to have that deep red rich color that you see. So in terms of time, this is actually the hardest to make. Of course, the white wine, like we just mentioned, one to two hours, the red wine, 30 days. Because rosé is in the middle of production time, it's also the middle of the colors. You look at it, it looks like you took these, mixed them together, and out came a rosé. And the interesting about the rosé, I think as of now, this might be my favorite. But after having tasted all six categories, I'm kind of stuck between red and rosé. But he was telling me the best selling point about rosé is you can pair with anything. You can pair with anything. Any kind of food. So there you go. Flexibility seems to be the selling point because normally you order a meal, right? So when you order the meal, you have to think is what is the most appropriate wine for your meal? So you have to think, oh, I ordered a filet mignon, so now I must order a red wine, egg, you know. <laughs> there is a science to this. But when you order a rosé, it's good for beginners because one, it tastes delicious, and two, it doesn't matter what you're eating, it can go with anything. So, guys, you're in luck. I'm making your life easy. Now, there is two different categories often compared sparkling and kava. Sparkling, it's actually anything that's carbonated. At least in the Philippines, you, pretty much anything that's carbonated can pass for sparkling wine. Here, what makes a kava a kava is that the bubbles are authentic. All right, so understand people that a kava to be a kava is the same as what makes the champagne a champagne. Exactly. Yes, uh, we cannot call champagne to our kava because champagne is only for France region. Right. So a champagne is only a champagne because it comes from a particular region in France. And that is like a law, a literal law in Europe, where there are European countries that will not allow you to call it champagne unless it comes from yeah. the champagne region of France. The same goes for cava. Nobody can call cava if it's not coming from that special region. Oh! <laughs> so if you look here, they even have a literal stamp of approval as goes for champagne. If they don't have that, that means that it's not regulation and it's not from the region of Cava. Okay, 
not bad for 15 minutes, huh? <laughs> so now, just to end it, a dessert wine, which in general is known for being sweeter. More sugar, sweeter, and alcohol content tends to be higher. He was saying as high as 20%, this one's 15%. 30% sometimes. Hi, that high? Oh, who wants to get drunk? <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm pretty stoked. I have tried now a few. I guess I can, I can obviously tell the difference between sparkling wine and say a rosé. Because being carbonated, it gives it away. I can tell the slight difference between a rosé and a white wine. So I'm still like super basic. I'm not yet blindfold ready, but you know, I'm gonna get there. Mark my words, uh, there's gonna be a future vlog one day where I'm gonna put a blindfold and impress you guys. <laughs> Straight takes, huh? Anyways, I had a day. Thank you, Oscar Boss, for this. Welcome. It was an experience. And, um, hey, <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> it's not every day you get to do this and call it work, but that's awesome. But anyways, I loved it. It's a day. Um, shout out to Augusty Barcino. Shout out to Mega World Lifestyle Malls for making this also happen. Um, social medias of Barcino are on the screen. Instagram and Facebook, they have Barcino Wines on both. And what else? I want to. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Teacher Marcino, that's me. And, uh, <laughs> and if you want to experience Spain every day, the experience of uh, having Spanish food, Spanish wines, mm -hmm. just come to Marcino. Oh. Everybody will work. Specifically the Eastern branch, because the end of backdrop. Okay, now that we're done with Marcino, it's time for Tony and Sergio. Where we're going to learn a little bit about how to pair your meal with the right wine. Okay, so now we're at Tony and Sergio's and I'm here with their resident wine specialist, Sir Junsin. So, the whole point of this is wine and food pairings. What can you say about the basics for a beginner? What are the rules of pairing food with wine? Actually, sir, uh, for our uh, so, uh, course, so Carpaccio di Manzo, mm. We are going to pair it Merlot, the reason why, because it's light and it's perfect for a uh, starter. Tapos, yung main course natin is herb chicken. And yung pairing dyan ay ano ba? Chardonnay, uh, white meat. At bakit yung dahilan dyan? Why the pairing of white meat specifically? Because it's perfect Chardonnay because a little bit dry and low acid. Okay. Chicken and fish now are apparently particularly good with white wine. So that's behind that combination. Okay, so that sums up the first two. Finally, we're on to dessert. And, um, what's the Apple crumble. Apple crumble. I have no idea what that means, but it's delicious. <laughs> I just like the devour half of it. I'm scrumptious. So, apple crumble was paired with the rosé. At yung dahilan daw, rosé goes well with anything, but desserts are like a plus plus plus. So that sums up my vlog. I had a lot of food, a lot of wine. I think I might be a little bit drunk at this point, if I'm being honest. But you know, they expect that to happen. I don't know what else you can do when you have like seven glasses of wine in a day. I didn't drink everything for the record, but I start. I, I had a good bit of that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna sing talaga ako eh. <laughs> Finish. I'll just end this now. Thanks for the sponsored vlog. It's not every day I get to drink on the job, but um, I wouldn't mind making a habit of it. I hope you guys learned something from this experience. I know I have. Don't worry, I'm not driving after this. I'm gonna take a taxi. More love. Bye.